All right, guys, this is Jerry. This is the start of lecture 13. Um, although I'm recording this the second time because the first time I did this, the stupid system stopped. It didn't record the first, whatever it is, 20 minutes and then started recording. Like, what, what am I doing? How can I work like this? How can you learn like this? This is insane. What a stupid system. Um, so this is part one of the lecture. And when I go into part two, there's going to be a little, like it's not going to be as seamless as the lectures usually are. It's going to be a little, uh, a little bit disjointed. Uh, and the reason why it's disjointed is because the thing started recording after about 20 minutes, bizarrely, and then record to the end. Like, what is this? What is going on? Um, but today what I want to do is I want to um, do a little bit of revision about uh, a review of what we've learned. Because although we've done, um, uh, it hasn't. It doesn't seem as if we've done a lot. We actually have done quite a bit. So I want to kind of bring, just bring you, bring you, just just do a few review questions, just to kind of crystallize all the different ideas. And even now, we, even with the questions that we're going to do, we're not going to cover all the stuff that we've done. But I'm just going to go back over uh, last year's exam and go through the multiple choice questions that are relevant to my section because Connor's ones you've probably done already, and uh, maybe I can't do. To be honest. And, uh, and then do the longer question from last year as well, my longer questions from last year as well. Okay, so that would be in part two. But in the first part of, the, of, the, um, uh, of this lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the five multiple choice questions that are, kind of, uh, that are um, deal with uh, matrices from last year's exam. So I'm going to start with question 11, and I'm going to go up to question 15, and then I do question 16 just for the laugh in part two, and then I do the longer questions. Okay, so uh, this is 2019, question 11. And um, the question if it, it was, it was this, I gave you a matrix F, I gave the students a matrix F, 1, 0, 1, K, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and I asked them for the return to that. Now, the determinant of f is a very important calculation in, in matrices and in, in, in applied mathematics. <clears throat> we talked about this. It's, it's particularly important for mechanical engineers because you use this kind of idea of the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix to calculate the moment of a force. And moment is extremely important in mechanical engineering. Um, but in electronics as well, when you just start doing electromagnetism, you see, you, you'll see this kind of idea again. So this idea of, of a vector product is exactly the same as the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix. And it's very important you get the recipe into your brains. Okay, you need to do this. You need to be happy doing this. So do this. Okay, so now this is a 3 by 3 matrix. And we want to get the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. And what you do is you replace, the first thing you do is you, it's just a stupid notational thing, but let's do it anyway. You're going to replace the square brackets that we have here by two straight lines. That's the mathematical notation for the determinant of this matrix here, okay? Now, there's no equal to zero here, guys. We're just going to get the determinant, okay? So we're not getting, it's, it's, you, you only set the term equal to zero when you're getting eigenvalues, as we'll talk about maybe later on. Um, but uh, in this case, all you're looking for now is just the determinant of the matrix. So uh, you replace the square brackets, as I say, by the two straight line brackets. And then what you do is you write down the first term which in the first row, which is one. And then what you do is you cover up the first row and you cover up the first column because this is the this is the recipe, and it's one by one, which is one minus zero by zero. That's what it is. Okay. The next entry then is k in the first row. You must change the sign of k, so it's minus k, and you're going to um, add these two terms or these three terms. And then what you do is you replace the first row and the second column now because we're looking at the second uh, uh, entry in the first row. So it's zero by one, which is zero, minus zero by zero. Okay, so zero by one, which is zero minus zero by zero. And the final entry then is plus zero by, and we don't care what it you multiply by, you actually multiply by zero, but, but you're multiplying here, the third entry here is zero, so you don't have to worry about this. So the first entry here gives you one by one, the second entry here, this is zero minus zero, which is zero. So all, all you get here, guys, is one. Come on. You know, this is just, this is like I could teach. I, I, I have, we have a, a, a gorgeous golden retriever, Charlie. 
I think I could teach Charlie this. I think Charlie would get this, you know? And you're 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 better than the golden retriever. <laughs> All right. Come on, get this into your brains. It's very important. Um, and the recipe is important. And it's one of those things that okay, you can resist doing it, but you need to do this if you want to progress. It's one of these stupid things that you have to get into your brains for for as a as an engineer. So uh, especially as an engineering student. You will not be doing this on the factory floor, but definitely as an engineering student, you are going to be looking at the terminals. So get this into your brain. Um, let's look at question 12. Question 12 was, um, taking this matrix F here, we want to multiply it by its transpose. So we want to, an next question 12, I want, to, I want you to calculate F, F transpose where F was this matrix here. Now, excuse me a second, guys, while I peer over this, my, my screen, and making sure that this is actually recording. Yeah, it seems to be okay. So what I want to do now here, guys, is I want to take uh, multiply F by its transpose. Uh, so the first thing to do is I write down what F is. F is one, K, zero, zero, one, zero, and zero, zero, one. And now remember what the transpose is. The transpose, the way I do it, uh, maybe it's, it's, you know, is that the first row becomes the first column. So the first row becomes the first column, so it's 1k0. The second row, 0, 1, 0, becomes the second column. And the third row becomes the third column. Alternatively, what you can do to get the transpose is you can flip um, uh, entries on either side of the main diagonal. But I just prefer this, way. I don't know why. It's, this, this is what I do, OK? Now. Remember, when you're multiplying a square matrix by a square matrix, you're always going to get a square matrix. So we're going to get a three by three matrix here. Okay? And to get the first column of the product matrix, we're going to focus here on the first column of the second matrix, because that's what you do. And you're going to multiply each row of the first matrix by this, the co first column of the second matrix. Okay? So to get the first entry up here, the top left entry up here, we're going to multiply this row by this column. So it's going to be 1 by 1, which is 1, plus k by k, which is k squared, plus 0. So I'm going to get 1 plus k squared. Make sure you know where that's coming from, guys. I'm multiplying the first row, the, all the elements in the first row, by all the elements in the second, uh, the first column, and I'm adding. So one by one plus k by k plus zero by zero. To get the second entry in the product matrix here, I'm going to multiply the second row by the first column. All the entries in the second row by all the entries in the first column. So it's going to be zero by one, which is zero, plus one by k, which is k, plus zero by zero, which is zero. So I'm just going to get k here. And finally, guys, I'm going to multiply the third row by the first column. So I'm going to multiply 0 by 1, which is 0, 0 by k, which is 0, and finally 1 by 0, which is 0. So I'm going to get 0 here. So before we progress, now guys, make sure you understand where the, those, those, those entries come from. I'm multiplying each of the rows by the first column. That's all I'm doing to get the first column of the product matrix. And the reason why this is defined the way it is is because it comes from simultaneous equations, which we talked about. But um, but you have to kind of divorce yourself from that and just just remember what the recipe is. You're multiplying rows by columns to get columns. Okay. To get the second column of your product matrix here, what you're going to do now is you're going to focus on the second column, and you're going to multiply each row by the second column. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply one by zero, which is zero plus k by 1, which is k, plus 0 by 0, so I'm going to get k here. I'm going to multiply the second row here by this column here, so 0 by 0, which is 0, 1 by 1, which is 1, 0 by 0, so I get 1 here, and finally, 0 plus 0 plus 0, so I get 0 here. And finally, folks, then, I'm going to multiply to get the third column of your product matrix, you're going to multiply each of the rows of the first matrix by the third column of the second matrix. So I'm going to multiply this row by this column, this row by this column, this row by this column to get the entries here. So the first entry up here is going to be 1 by 0, which is 0, k by 0, which is 0, 0 by 1, which is 0, so I get 0. 
I'm saying zero too much, I know. Zero by zero, one by zero, zero by zero, zero by one, again, zero. And finally then, zero, zero, and one. That's it. That's all it is. <clears throat> if nothing else, guys, from our time together, our brief time together, and we weren't even together, our virtual time together, two things I want you to appreciate, uh, I want you to be able to do. Calculate the determinant of a two by two and, or a three by three matrix and be able to multiply square matrices together. Very important. You need to get happy with this. Okay? Very good. So that's, uh, that's question 11 and question 12. Now, question 13 and question 14 are related. We kind of did this in, 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 in class when we talked about quadratic forms and things like that. And um, it's easy to get confused within the next couple of questions. So I just want you to be aware of this. And this is kind of important as well because you do actually see this. And it is, it is a little bit confusing. Okay? So question 13 is this. I give you a vector matrix. Cos theta sine theta. And I'm asking you for x, x transpose. Okay? Now, when you're dealing with column and row matrices the first time, it's a little bit tricky. I, I think it is tricky to actually get your head around what, what, what's going on here. I think it's fairly straightforward, or fairly obvious to appreciate what the transpose is when you're talking about a, a three by three matrix, right? So the first row becomes the first column. But when you're talking about column, though, it's not, it's not, it's not obvious what's, what's going on here. But basically what happens here is that if you have X as a vector column, X transpose becomes a row matrix and vice versa. If you have a row matrix and you want it to transpose, you get a column matrix. So that's the important thing here to appreciate. Is that if, I, if, if I'm, we're given x in question 13 as cos theta sine theta, x transpose then is just cos theta sine theta as a row. And that's a little bit of, takes a little bit of getting used to, but that's what it is. Get this into your brains because you will see this as you go through. Okay? So now, guys, what I want is I want xx transpose. I want to find out, figure out what that is. And now this is a little bit tricky. Now, if you look at this, what xx transpose is, can we actually even do the multiplication here? Well, the way you do is to investigate if you can do the multiplication is you write down the dimensions. The dimensions of x are we've got two rows and one column. So x is a two by one. x transpose has got one row and two columns. So these two numbers here, the inner two numbers are the same. So I can actually do the multiplication. And what am I going to get when I do the multiplication? I'm going to get a two by two matrix. And that's not obvious because from this two, the, a, a column and a row matrix, we're going to generate a two by two matrix. So XX transpose folks, let me write down is this. Um, let me write down cos theta as C and S sin theta as S just to make things quicker. Okay, so that's what you get. Now, I know I'm going to get a two by two matrix here because this, this tells me what two, two by two matrix do, do you get? Well, remember what you're doing. You're going to be multiplying rows by columns. But in this case, the, the rows and columns are very straightforward because you've only got one entry in each. So here's what you do. So to get the, the first column here, you focus on the first column here. There's only, there's only one column here. Okay. So what you do is you multiply. Um, Sorry, guys, sorry, I'm just, I'm just losing concentration there for a second. All right, so, uh, I, I, oh, I've done this wrong. I, 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 that, that's, that's why I'm, that's why I'm, I'm making, I, I had a, a brain freeze there. Um, I want to get X, X transpose. And what I'm getting here is X transpose X. So don't be stupid like Jerry, actually. But so um, X, X transpose actually is this. X is cos theta sine theta, and X transpose is cos sine. That's what I want to do, all right? This is actually question 14. So that's the reason why I'm kind of jumping ahead there in my own brain, my stupid brain. But um, forget this, that's not right. Um, if I want to get XX transpose in question 13, and XX transpose looks like this. This is what X is. This is what um, uh, uh, X transpose is. So how do I get that? I'm going to get a two by two matrix. That's definitely true because this is a, a two by one. This is a one by two. So I'm going to get a two by two matrix. 
And what do I do? So I'm going to focus on the first row or the first row of the second matrix, get the first row here. And I'm going to multiply each of the elements of the rows by the column. So the first entry here, I'm going to get C by C. I'm just going to get C squared. All right, there's no more adding because, because everything is much simpler here because I'm only talking about rows and columns. So if I'm multiplying X by X transpose here, the first entry is going to be C by C, which is just C squared. The next entry then is going to be S by C, so down here. So we're going to multiply the second row by the first column. So I'm going to get S, C. Okay. Um, to get the next column here, I'm going to focus on the second column. I'm going to multiply C by S or S by C. So it doesn't matter which one. Let me just write down S by C. And find down here, folks, I'm going to multiply the second row by the second column. I'm just going to get S squared. So that's a bit unusual. Now, we talked about this at the indexes and how, you know, when you're multiplying a matrix or columns and rows by their transpose, you have to be a little bit careful. So in question 13, what I was looking for was that a two by two matrix, cos squared, sine squared, sine theta, cos theta, in, in the off, as the off diagram um, is there. So that's question 13. Now, as I say, guys, question 14 then was, um, was x transpose x. Now, x transpose, as we said, guys, is cs, so that's a one by two. x is a two by one. So when I multiply x transpose by x, these two numbers are the same. So when I multiply x transpose by x, I get a one by one matrix, which is just a number, okay? So be very careful. This The order is very, very important in matrix multiplication. If I multiply x by x transpose, I get a two by two matrix. If I multiply x transpose by x, I just get a scalar. This second one here, the x transpose by x, when you're multiplying a, um, a row by a, a column and to get a scalar is actually surprisingly important and it occurs a bit in engineering analysis. So get happy with this. But we know what we're gonna get. So in this case, x transpose x is this. So what I'm gonna get here, folks, is CS, because that's what x transpose is. X is CS as a vector. So I know I'm going to get a number. So what I do now, folks, to get to what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this row by this column. So I'm going to get c squared, c by c, which is c squared, plus s by s, which is s squared. And what I'm going to get, cos squared plus sine squared. And the most important identity in trigonometry is that cos squared plus sine squared is one always. So when I multiply x transpose by x, I just get the number one. So it's very, very important that you distinguish between xx transpose here and x transpose x here. This is question 13, this is question 14, completely different answers. This is very unusual or very strange when you come across it the first time, but you definitely need to kind of get this into your heads as well. This idea of, of, of multiplying rows by columns and getting different results depending on which, with the order of multiplication. The second one here is very important. Be happy with this. We know we're going to get a number because the, the 200 numbers are the same, but the two outer numbers are one by one. And if you have a one by one matrix, folks, you don't put the square back on, you just treat it as a number. So we know we're just going to get a number when we multiply x transpose by x. And what you do, you multiply the row by the column, each entry in each in the first in the row by the, the corresponding entry in the column. And in this case, you get cos squared plus sine squared and cos squared plus sine squared is equal to one. Okay. All right. Let me just talk about question 15, if I can, and um, I'm going to end the first part of the lecture after that, and then go into question 16, but it's not going to be smooth, as you can going to be a sort of uh, jerky thing there as we, as we go into the part two of this, because the stupid software didn't record the first part of the lecture the first time, bizarrely. All right, question 15 from last year's exam was eigenvalues, this is question 15, sorry guys, eigenvalues for, 2 minus 1, 1, and 2. Now, you do have to be a little bit brave when you start talking about this stuff because uh, this is something that is, it's, it's not an obvious thing that you would want to be doing, calculating eigenvectors or eigenvalues, in this case, of a matrix, of a square matrix. But the calculation is important. And you will see this as you go through uh, your engineering education. So you need to get happy with this. And all this is, guys, is a recipe. And just remember what the recipe is. If you're asked for eigenvalues, what you do is you take the square matrix, you subtract lambda from the main diagonals, you set the determinant of the result equal to zero. So this is the situation where you set the determinant equal to zero. 
you set the determinant equal to zero when you're looking for eigenvalues. Okay, so here we go. So what you do is you subtract lambda from both from both these elements here, two minus lambda, two minus lambda. And the question is, well, why do you do that? Because that is what you do. All right, this is the way God made eigenvalues. So you subtract lambda from the main diagonal elements. If it was a three by three matrix, as you would see in part two, you, you subtract lambda three times. But this is a two by two matrix. So you subtract lambda from the first main diagonal element and the second one, and you leave the other ones alone. So it's minus one and one. That's that's because that's the recipe. And you set that equal to zero. Okay. That is what you do. When I came across this the first time myself in college, um, I was a little bit, uh, as I say, I didn't like this because I didn't, I, I didn't know really know what an eigenvalue was, and you're not expected to. All you're expected to do here, guys, is be able to calculate the eigenvalues. Like, what do they mean, really? Uh, you don't care. All you care about is calculating them. Okay. So in this case, you're getting a determinant of a two by two matrix. So it's this by this. So it's two minus lambda squared minus, be careful with the minus signs. It's minus, in this case, minus one by one, which is minus one. So when you multiply that out here, guys, I think you get four plus lambda squared minus four lambda plus one is equal to zero. So you get lambda squared minus four lambda plus five equal to zero, I think. Lambda squared minus four lambda plus five is equal to zero. Okay, so that's what you get. So um, let me go. Back. Let me just go on to the next page and, and solve that quadratic for you. No, I can't factor that in my head, uh, so I'm 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 not ashamed to uh, have to use the uh, the quadratic formula. Uh, when I have to, so uh, I, I so lambda then is equal to minus b, so it's four plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is sixteen, minus four by one by five, all over two. So that's probably the most important formula in mathematics, actually, the quadratic formula. You know, it, it, this was a major breakthrough in mathematics, actually, when people find out what, what the quadratic formula was. This is in the 1300s in Florence or someplace where they, you know, they were dying at the age of 12 from, you know, I don't know, walking around. Although that happens here now as well. We haven't progressed very much. But um, this is what they were doing. So this is this this was a major breakthrough in mathematics, solving quadratic equations. And one of the problems that they found was, is, was this kind of situation here. If you if you look at this situation here, you get four plus or minus minus four over two. And this was a big issue. And this is the beginning of uh, complex numbers, which we're going to start tomorrow. And this is exactly where they arose when, and, uh, when we were talking about um, getting the square root of negative numbers. And you can't get the square root of negative numbers. It doesn't make sense. A square root is a number which you multiply by itself gives you the number. And so therefore, when you, you can't find, there's no number that when you multiply by itself, you get minus four because minus by minus gives you plus, plus by plus gives you plus. So you can't get that. So what people did, and this was a major breakthrough, and it's very, very clever, actually, when you think about it, this is just amazingly smart, is what they did was, well, I know I can write this as the square root of minus one by the square root of four over two, because the square root of two numbers multiplied together is the two numbers multiplied together getting the square root of the two numbers multiplied together. So I can, I can, I bring, I can bring the square root into each of the two numbers here, because minus four is minus one by four. So I can write it like that. I know what the square root of four is. It's two over two. I don't know what the square root of minus one is. It just doesn't exist. It just, it's just in my imagination. It's imaginary, <laughs> scary. So I'm going to call it I. And this is actually amazingly clever. And um, they didn't shy away from this. They just said, okay, I don't know what the square root of minus one was, is, but I'm going to just kind of call it I and just go with this and just uh, be very proud of myself that I can now solve every quadratic equation. So guys, when you do this calculation, then you divide it into each case by two, you get two plus or minus i. <clears throat> so the eigenvalues in this case are complex. 
and you can have uh, complex eigenvalues. Now, we didn't do this when we were doing the lectures, but because I knew that this was coming up here. Uh, so you can get uh, you can get negative, uh, you can get uh, positive negative eigenvalues. You can get eigenvalues which are the same. You get the same eigenvalue. You get two, two, one, one. You can also get complex eigenvalues, and that's fine as well. And that gives you information about the system, even though we've got uh, I doesn't exist. You can actually deduce important information about a real life physical system from the fact that the eigenvalues are complex. It's just bizarre, but it's true. So um, in this case, though, all you had to do was solve the quadratic equation, replace the square root of minus one by i, and you got your marks and you went on. Now we're going to be talking about this, how just this identification of the square root of minus one with i, how powerful it is. It's a reach, it's just a mathematical game that you're playing but it has, it's a very, very interesting game. It's a very, very simple idea. You replace it with square root minus one by i, and you get a whole area of mathematics that develops as a result of this. Now, you're not into mathematics, why should you be? But it's, it, it's, it's to me, it's incredible that that's just this idea of, we don't know what this, let's call it something and see where it leads to. It leads to this amazing kind of analysis, but you don't care. All you care about in this case was getting two plus or minus i and getting marks. And realizing or, or just appreciating that the square root of minus one, we're going to call i, and that's it. That's what complex numbers are, that the square root of minus one is i. And also, so uh, just, 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 just remember, if the square root of minus one is i, if you square both sides, you get i squared is equal to minus one. So that's what complex numbers is. Is this thing i, whose square is minus one? And it's just it doesn't it, it, it doesn't exist in nature, but it exists in our brains. And yet, if it does exist in our brains, we can actually say things about nature just from this. It's just it's just what it's just incredible. And um, that's question fifteen. Question sixteen, I'm going to do now in part two. And as I say, there's going to be a kind of a, a, a rupture in the proceedings because it's not going to be smooth because it started recording after this when I first did this. It's just bizarre. All right, guys. Uh, enjoy part two. It's a winner. I'm in much better form because I have to do this again here. <laughs>